This is Village of Minerva Park Council meeting, January 10th, 2022, 7 p.m. And let's start with roll call. <laughs> you know I was about to go right to the other. Um, Council President Wolf. Not here. Council Person Koss. Present. Council Person Brueger. Here. Council Person Shrestha. Here. Council Person McNamara. Present. And Council Person Camara, Camara is excused for tonight. And let's go straight to the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. And let's go straight to December 14th and January 3rd council meeting minutes. Do you guys want to separate them or do you have them together? Yeah, we have to. Okay, yeah. December 14th council Second. meeting minutes. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mentions. Okay. Um, January 3rd council meeting minutes. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mentions. Okay. All right. Green cards. So, for our uh, scant few uh, members of our residents that are here today, there are green cards on the table. Uh, fill in uh, what section of the meeting you'd like to address council. Uh, we will work you in accordingly, and uh, I already have one. So, there we go. All right, let's go straight to village official reports, and let's start with Chief Matt Dell. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I don't have anything to add to my submitted report. I have any questions I'm happy to answer. Anybody have any questions? Any questions, sir? All right. And fiscal officer, Leah Klein. Hello. Um, I don't really have anything new. Um, Kim is working on the um, on closing up the month. Um, but as some of you know, we have to wait for um, the certificate from the county engineer to give us the funds, the tax funds that were collected. Um, for um, the Minerva Lake Road Fund. Um, so we usually get that. Last year it came in around February. Um, so <laughs> it was a little slow. So we probably will be able to close out the year until about February. Does everybody have any questions? Okay. Um, I'm going to pretend I'm Mike Flickinger with the engineer's report. Task order number 14, Westerville City School, Minerva Park School Plan Review. Um, they are still waiting for the school district to submit its proposed widening plan for Farview. And as soon as it's received, they will review the plan. Task order number 18 is the 2021 Storm Sewer Improvement Project. I would also just like to say, um, AKA East Shore Court Project. Um, they prepared the notice of commencement for the contractor um, in purchasing materials and coordinating with the sub subcontractors, which is right here. Um, we continue to coordinate with DJX Construction regarding their construction schedule. Um, and they have also submitted preliminary pipe and structural submittals, which uh, they are currently reviewing. Task order number 19, the Village Engineer Services, after a meeting with village staff, they restarted the process of analyzing the utility surcharge, um, which is basically our water and sewer bills, and we're working on all of that too. Um, make sure that the funds are being put in the right they're they're <laughs> we're putting them in the right places but they're not where we need them to be so we're just trying to make sure it's adequately all of our accounts are adequate, adequately funded um that's the best way to say it. task order number 20 is the 2022 storm sewer storm sewer improvement project that's actually behind jordan road um they are reviewing all of Resource International's storm sewer hydraulic models, um, and they're updating the modeling results. And then they are considering the model results and in determining feasible alignments to prepare preliminary opinions of probable construction cost. Say that really fast. Um, so right now they're just working to find out the best options to move forward with getting that pipe realigned and I've actually talked with Jesse and um, Eric, and we will be trying to coordinate with Yasmin Market to see what we can do on getting the 
other portion of that put together. So that's something we'll be working on this month. Um, and hopefully within the next 45 days, we'll have some ideas of where we go with this. And that is Mike Flickinger's report. And now we're gonna go to Jesse, legal counsel. Uh, good evening. I uh, sent everyone an email with sort of kind of broad strokes training for new council members especially, but always a good refresher for everybody on public records, open meetings. Uh, and I know that was a little more detailed on all sorts of tax abatement issues, but can't hurt to have it in case you ever need it. Uh, feel free to email me or call me with any questions. I touched briefly uh, in that email also on uh, the administrative appeal we're going to hear uh, Thursday night. So beforehand, what we will, we'll get you a copy of the fence permit that was issued and the appeal application so you have it. Uh, when we get here, village staff will present sort of the issue, why they made the decision that they did. Uh, then the appellant's attorney can present evidence, uh, call witnesses, everybody has to be under oath. Uh, they can cross-examine village staff, sort of probe into our reasoning. Uh, in the, the ones I've done before here, you always want to err on the side of letting too much information in at these hearings because on appeal down to the, the common police court, which is the next step after you all hear it, uh, a lot of times uh, parties will try and bring in additional evidence by saying that the municipality didn't allow all the evidence. In. So we're going to let that let that come in. Uh, you can filter what is or is not relevant. Like I said in the email, I'm not really here to sit sort of to, to give you the legal explanation of everything. That's not the role of the, the village law director in these cases. Uh, but I'm sort of keeping the process on track, make sure everybody's under oath and we get a good recording of this in case we need a transcript. So that's all. Uh, I think I, I got an email from the uh, appellant's attorney today. Uh, he hadn't heard back from the permit holder's attorney on a settlement offer, so I think we're going forward. Uh, and that should be it. Uh, in addition to the original citation or the original uh, permit, yes. uh, he also include then like the relevant code that would apply to that, if that makes sense? Yes. And we can say what our, see what our actual Gosh, Absolutely. And that's all. Cool, cool. Thank you. Anybody else? Questions? Okay, let's go straight over to Eric Fisher, zoning um, village plan. Thank you, Mayor. Members of the Council, pleasure to be here at the first official meeting of the year. Um, nothing too crazy beyond what we discussed, which wasn't crazy on our Saturday morning session um the only thing i just wanted to bring up is we'll need a uh, for the pnc liaison we will need a motion tonight to uh, bring one forward and uh council to accept that so and then um the only interesting uh tidbit item from today was that uh, i met with uh, a couple of contractors for the middle school who are going to be hunting for the water line out there as we discussed it's there it's somewhere under 161 um but we have to bring out bloodhound to find us it's, it's our line um there's a resident who uh, is a dowser so if you if you need a dowser i know i know is that mark no um what brings it interesting is that this the school I, one of the reasons in mind did not uh, pull a small line and obviously it was an expense involved to be able to water the signage and flowers out front that was part of the original plan this will potentially give us the opportunity while they're pulling the line to um, make that small cost for where that, that that new line is into our you know a meter into our like we originally planned into our flower bed so that's just a little side tidbit there now I'll get some numbers and see what that's going to actually run because the contractor doing that can probably service us while he's out there and there'd be some efficiencies to do it that way. So, um, which also brings brings me to the other point. I'm going to put in front of you a, a kind of an immediate change to our schedule. Um, and if you want to take multiple readings to do it, that's fine. Um, what we've been experiencing since the end of the year is our fee schedule specifically for what we're charging. Um, for a right-of-way review is not going to be sufficient to cover all of the requests and stuff that we're constantly getting in now for right-of-way permitting and because we're we're having to bring Bloodhound out to find our water and sewer lines and it's costing us $210 an hour and so 250 is not going to cover it and the amount of time they're spending out there is minimally one hour 
Um, so then you're also, you're, you're missing out once you're able to immediately bring back your staff time to review. And then sometimes, like with the school thing, he's going to be out there for an hour and a half, two hours to mark that area. So, um, so yes, we're going we're gonna to just need to bump that up. Okay, so I'll put something in front of everyone. Um, keeping in mind, this, this type of work is the big work, doesn't affect the residents. These are the big companies like, you know, water, um, fiber, especially. We've hit a lot of fiber and cable upgrades, spectrum. Wow, all those guys are digging into our right of way. And so, um, but the middle school, they're going to have to, they have to come out and they have to actually dig into the road. So they're coming out for repairs when it warms back up and they have to they put a temporary fix up there. So if anybody complains, there's a kind of a divot as you go down. Um, Minerva Lake Road, south or uh, east on Farview, but that's going to be corrected. I already had a discussion with them, so they know that. So that's all I have. Any other questions? Uh, I have one brief one. Um, yes, sir. I'm sure you recall uh, a few months ago I was asking uh, about the one house um, you can see up on that little map that um, apparently is still on a sump system. Was wondering if it would at all be possible to be uh, hooked in with this. Water line work is about any uh, something. Uh, septic. Or, uh, I think it's on septic. Yes, yeah, septic. Yeah. That's what I meant. So yes. So we'll have to look at how the sewer main line is and stuff, and, and sometimes there's requirements. I I don't know what the situation is with the sewer. Uh -huh. Now we're gonna we're gonna mark everything while we're out there here with blood. We have to mark the sewer that's within that area as well as the water because that's our responsibility within our jurisdictional boundaries. So we will see where it's at and see if we, you know, if it's somewhere reasonable, then perhaps we'll just incentivize them to look up if that's what they want to do. Yeah, I remember them asking about that. They yeah. keep a printing building. It's yeah. pretty intent on getting that done if at all possible. So okay. thank you so much for... Yep. I have a green card for planning and zoning. Uh, uh, one Tony Benedetti, uh, you know, uh, give us your name, address, <coughs> and you got three minutes. Tony Benedetti, 29 to the very important. You know, I, real quickly, I'm gonna, I asked Eric about this last meeting. Find out if where they're hooking up the sewer line. He said he'd work on it. He didn't do anything. Okay. And then there's another question because I keep coming up here and asking the same questions over and over again. And tonight I'd like to talk about planning and zoning right now for my two and a half minutes or what. Uh, I've been trying to get planning and zoning involved in the permitting and how code enforcement. Uh, is enforced here in the village. And most recently, like it says in the, in the newsletter, is that I brought up the fact that code 1442.01 of our code requires that planning and zoning review all permits for building permits, or all applications for building permits. It also states in 120206 the exact same thing that planning and zoning is required to approve all building permits. Now, Eric came up with some, something about resolution, and this is another one I hope you write down, resolution 16-2017, where he says, Eric says, that that's the or, or the resolution that the village passed to take away the responsibility of planning and zoning and making permits approved administratively. He's absolutely wrong about that. That ordinance or resolution was written to include planning and zoning and the approval of permits for parks, playgrounds, and common areas or something like that. That was the purpose of resolution 16-2017. So what I'm trying to point out to you guys is that the code enforcement and permitting process is so jacked up. You're about to hear about it in an appeal for offense, which I'm going to talk about later. But Code enforcement, if you look right now, the signs at the strip mall are broken and missing the, the sign faces. Just two years ago, the mayor was involved in this. We wrote legislation and, the, and corrected the code, sign code to say that you have to cover up these vacant signs. It's been like that for months, but our code enforcement officer hasn't figured that out yet. There's also a fence that's being approved, or I don't even know if it's being approved or not, but at 2665 uh, Minerva Lake Road, there is a fence being put up that is too close to the street. It's supposed to be 14 feet behind the rear of the adjacent property. And there's a fence, like I said, we'll talk later about the fence code that's about uh, a fence appeal which are in here. And that wasn't so bad. Was it? 
Thank you, sure, Mr. Benedict. Next up. Are we going to? I think it's Mayor's report. Uh, no, zoning oh. officer. Um, the report is in the files. It's also going to be uploaded in the packets on the website. So if anybody wants to go through and look at the zoning officer's report. <coughs> okay, so mine will be quick. Um, right now, <coughs> we are looking into getting a new pool slide. Um, the one was broken last year, so we're working on that. I should say, Barb's been working on that. Um, we're also back looking in, not back looking into, but moving forward with a shelter structure um, over by the basketball court. So hopefully in the next couple weeks, you guys will start seeing some information on that. Um, we are also gonna begin talking about a structure for our maintenance department, likely over by the pool as well, um, as we move forward with the possibility of uh, the building and everything where we're gonna put our maintenance, um, all of our maintenance equipment. So that's gonna be, watch for it. We're gonna be talking about that here in the next little bit. Um, you're also going to see some updates to the website, hopefully, in the near future. Um, Barb has also been looking at the point and pay options for the pool, permitting, um, just trying to get into this century moving forward with our website. So um, just watch for those things coming up here, hopefully, in the next couple weeks. Um, so we'll keep you posted if we need you guys for that. Um, but other than that, thank you, Eric, for I know Westerville Schools has got a lot going on right now, and I know you've been busy doing all that, but I also know you've been doing... Um, <laughs> Lots of other things with water lines and all of that. Um, so that's really it. We've got lots going on right now, and hopefully we'll get a couple of these meetings scheduled um, for January and February, all of our committees, and I know we've got pool fees and all that stuff coming up, so hopefully we'll get a bunch of these meetings scheduled, and we'll have all kinds of stuff coming in the next couple weeks. Um, so that's all I have, and we can go to... Um, we did set... I might as well just say it. Um, as of right now, every, all of our committees have been set. Um, did did you send that to her for the website? I can't she must have, because we have a sheet with it all I put a copy of each of their folders. There you go. Um, so they've already got all of that. It'll be updated on the website. And if anybody has not submitted their profile, make sure you get that to the, get that to her so she can get all that beautiful stuff on there as well. Um, so we do have somebody for legislation. So let's switch it over to Mark. Before we go to oh. Councilperson Berger, we have another request to, to address Council from Mr. Benedetti regarding legislation. Perfect. Yeah, he was, even he was surprised. Who's that? Once again, I encourage him very important. I like to help out the rules of Council. You know, I, this, I listened to the work session Saturday morning uh, and heard what you guys had to say about it. And I have to tell you that I, the way I understand it, it's going to be five minutes in the, right before legislation, like right now is where it's going to be, okay, here's what my problem with that, is that first off, you know, it used to be three, three minute sessions, and, and that you can address three different topics. Right now, you're, that's cutting it down to one topic. I promise you guys, I'm not going to waste your time, I'm probably the only person that comes in here for the most part to, to address you guys. I'm not going to waste your time. I'm going to bring up relevant issues, and there's more than one a month, and I would say the reason I don't like it being in the middle is that you have old business, new business, where things are discussed, and then you can't say anything about it because oftentimes there are things that are brought up in old business and new business that I say, hey, wait a minute, I'd like to say something to that. You know, so what I'm hoping you guys will do is just go back to the way it was. Three, three minute uh, conversations or whatever, because what you're doing is limited more and more. And when I first started coming here, you were allowed five minutes. And then if they wanted to uh, address, if you were brought up something, then there was like a rebuttal. So you got five minutes, and then if they recognized you, you could get another five minutes for 10 minutes. That was the way it first started in the village. And then I came around, and then they just tried to chop it down. We don't want to hear from this for about a day, so we're going to make it three, three minutes. You know, so now you're going to go down to five minutes, one topic, that's it. You guys, these, men, they, these meetings don't last that long that you can't listen to three three-minute topics. You know, I, I take offense to the way the descriptions were of people that come up here and mumble and, and waste your time. You know, there's a difference between wasting your time and listening to stuff you just don't want to hear. And that's what it boils down to, is you just don't want to hear the complaints and to allow someone three minutes on a particular topic at three times in a meeting I don't think is asking too much 
So I really, and you guys don't need, you don't need to pass this as an emergency tonight, wait three readings, because you can, can change this whenever you want. We're having a meeting right now. There's been, th we're having three three minute things. We still did the, the pledge. You know, so nothing's really changing. You don't need to pass this as an emergency and wait the three readings, because there's people here that have concerns about the way this village is being run. And now what you're doing, and like Stacy had said, is just, you know, editing. Here, I have a question for you, though. So uh, I guess the thought process was because times have changed and there's more technological advances, there are other ways to access council, and that being email. Do you have a problem emailing council, and what's your objection to that? Well, I, I, I'm glad you brought that up because I will be sending you guys emails. So it's almost a new point from my standpoint because I'm going to get my point across to you. But what you need to understand is that there's other residents beside me that want to come and say things, but they're afraid to, you know, because of the way that atmosphere is in here. It's, it's, it's horrible. And, you know, so far I've been coming to these meetings for almost 14 years now expressing my concerns nothing's changed it hasn't gotten any better you know and so i, I appreciate that there are other ways to do this but Mr. 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 It's, and i for the record i did pause your time during the question okay. for your answer to the question and then when you resumed your topic i started your time back thank you sir I did have one other question for you. Your other green card topic you listed under other. Is it okay if we just hold that for citizens' comments? I would prefer that. Excellent. And we will invite you up again during citizens' comments. Okay. And Councilperson Brueger for legislation. Okay. Well, that's sort of alluded to. We only have one piece of uh, legislation on the board. Right. Um, that's not a legislation. But I know. All right, uh, resolution 2022-01, resolution adopting the rules of the council for the council of the village of the park for 2022 and declaring an emergency. Um, this is, of course, adopting our rules of council. There are two major changes in this. One, council meetings will be moved from Monday to Thursday nights uh, with the same weekly you know, second, and second and fourth weeks. Yeah. Yeah, the one in the middle. With, with a couple of exceptions for yes. the month where Labor Day is. And for some Labor exceptions Day. for holidays. Yeah. Yes. Um, and then the other is citizens' comments have been moved to before the legislative report, and any citizen will receive five minutes to make their comments. Um, apart from that, it is not significantly changed. Uh, we are being asked to waive readings on this so it can take effect, so our next meeting can be on a Thursday. Uh, otherwise, we have to have it on Mondays. Well, we wouldn't have to. We could move to move it. Right. Um, so I will start by asking if we will waive readings on this. I make a motion to suspend the rules for waive readings. Second. I think I the number of times I've done that. Okay. Ryan, second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on that? Anyone have any strong feelings one way or the other? I think this vote is just to waive the reading so that we can move forward to the next one. Okay. okay, so let's start with any discussion? Okay. Councilperson McNamara. Aye. Councilperson Shrestha. Aye. Councilperson Brugger. Aye. Councilperson Koss. Aye. And Council President Wolf. Aye. Okay, having waived the second and third reading, uh, we are going to, I am going to do a moment ask the past to declare an emergency once again so these rules can actually take effect in time for our next meeting instead of waiting 30 days. So I make a motion to pass uh, 2022 01 as an emergency. Second. Any discussion on this part? Okay. Councilperson Koss. Aye. Councilperson Brueger. Aye. Councilperson Shrestha. Aye. Councilperson McNamara. Uh, aye. And Council President Wolf. Aye. Okay, that concludes our legislation, but I do want to make a motion to uh, officially appoint our planning and zoning liaison. 
Uh, which I believe is Council President Wolf that we have been discussed. Yes. Yes. Second. Move and second. Any discussion? I think it's just a voice vote. Okay, perfect. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Extension. Okay, we're good. I guess the only thing else I'll say is there will be a legislative meeting at 6.30 before the next meeting, which will be now that it's on Thursday. I can't just add 7 to the date. Uh, the date for that will be the 27th of January. There we go. Thank you. So our next meeting is going to be the 27th of January at 7 p.m. and at 6.30 6 will be legislation. All right. Um, Let's go straight to old business right now, and then if anybody at the very end wants to schedule any meetings, we'll do it after we close out. So anybody with any old business? Anybody with new business? Can you say this would be the point we schedule? Let's do it at the very end, oh, that way we can end. close out. Um, no new business, let's go to citizen comments. All right. Senator, you had uh, indicated you had another topic to address council for. Uh, I'd like to talk about the appeal that you guys are about to hear uh, about a fence that was installed in the middle of a shared driveway is what the issue is here with this fence permit. Now, it's not in the middle. The, the total driveway of both houses is 17 feet wide. Now this fence goes down the property line in the middle, in between the two houses, creating a nine foot uh, driveway and an eight foot driveway. Now this is the code that you need to pay attention to here. It's 1282.11a, which describes driveways. I'm pause you for Hang one on second. for one second. I am pausing your time. The mayor had a question. I have a question. I, I just wanna, we've actually not heard, you're, you can continue, because I, I think you're okay with that. Um, but I want to make this clear for the record, and maybe I shouldn't say this, but we have not heard this appeal. No. I don't know that we have been presented the documentation or anybody has been doc presented the documentation. You got your information from a resident. So this is hearsay? So this is hearsay, in my opinion. Is that correct? Yes. No, that, that's correct. I mean, I just want to, I, I don't know this all to be fact, and, and no. until next week, I just want to make sure anybody that's watching no, no, knows, no, no, no. and you guys are aware that this came from a resident. This did not come from documentation that any one of us has received. Is that a fair statement? No, that, that's. I, I want to know as little as possible. No, that, well, that, that's accurate. We're not, we certainly can't stop a resident from. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. That, that's all I wanted but to point we can't out. Consider the information he's presenting. Mm -hmm. But he's allowed. To, he's allowed to speak. I just want to make it clear that yes. this was not pleadings to be considered regarding the appeal. Correct. All right. And Sorry. That, and so you can have your, your time back, but I want to make sure that they're aware. Why did you think that I can't say what I'm saying? But go educate. What, do I say? Sorry, Mr. Because you're being specific on, on I, documentation I don't know is accurate. So, Ms. Tolan, Ms. Benedetti, I will resume your time in just one moment. I just want to let you know that you have two minutes and 18 seconds remaining. <laughs> this is really go sounds ahead. about this, buddy. Right? You have two minutes. I'm trying to get something for you. Andrew. Okay. You know, I did, I was, I was notified by the, or the resident got a hold of me, told me what's going on. I made everybody on council aware of this code, 1282.11.A, or A. I told everybody on council about this, but the village decided to disregard this code. The, the, the thing is, guys, is that the co our, our code requires a driveway to be 10 foot wide, and it specifically says the driveway serving a residential parking area containing one to eight parking spaces shall have a minimum width of 10 feet. In my opinion, this is the code that specifically addresses shared driveways, because it, the reason that it is a shared driveway is because each person has to be able to use the, the neighbor's driveway to get in and out because of the 10 foot requirement. So there's nothing in the code that specifically says that these are shared, a shared driveway, but our code, our code does require that the driveway be 10 foot wide. And this, these driveways are nine foot wide and eight foot wide. The reason for this, it's in the, the code for a reason, because you should be able to maneuver back in and out of there without having to worry about hitting the fence or to get back there, period. That, and this is something that was pointed out to the code enforcement officer, the mayor, every member, member of council, and they all, before the fence went up, and they all decided, Tony, that doesn't matter. 
apparently. I mean, I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth, but they said that this is a good permit and that they should they have rights. The resident has rights to put up the fence. I agree that they should be able to put up the fence, but not to the point where it restricts the driveway down to less than our code requires. That's why it's a shared driveway. It's not specifically called out that way in the code, but our code requires there to be 10 foot. These people, the neighbors were given a, 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 a trespassing, or they found trespassing because they drive on their, their driveway, on the neighbor's driveway. We should, the village should not be getting in the middle of these shared driveway issues and tell and then the tip they were against the neighbors. Thank you very much. And that concludes our citizen comments. Mm -hmm. I have a, one very brief question for yes. Mr. Benedetti, um, if that's permissible. Um, oh, yeah. With regards to the codes um, 1442.01, 1202.06, and resolution 16 2017, um, while I'm doing my homework tonight, um, what, I guess, what is the overarching problem so that I can really dig in and see what my eyes find on it. What the just, problem is, is that planning and zoning should be approving all permits for building permits and also to be specific fence permits because 1442.07B requires that all fence permits be approved by planning and zoning. 1442.07B requires that fence permits be approved. Now, I've had complaints from people about the fences and that have been put up in the new development. I believe part of the problem is that it, they have, we haven't been paying attention very closely about it. That's why I think planning and zoning should be involved in permit approvals and code enforcement. And, and 1442.01 and 1202.06 specifically say that the Planning and Zoning Commission is to, uh, is to review and approve all applications for building permits. And Eric's contention is that that, that Resolution 16-2017, that that took away that responsibility and, and made it uh, administratively approved. There has been no language about the village taking away the responsibility of Planning and Zoning to approve Fence permits and building permits. Okay. So, Mr. Benedetti, do you feel that planning and zoning has appropriate resources, or do you feel that the code was written poorly and that planning and zoning shouldn't take, or should only take over because that code is written that way, or do you feel it would be more appropriate because planning and zoning has those appropriate resources? Like, what is the solution? What, yes. What is your solution? What happened is that when we got the the, uh, the new but what is your solution? Not what the, happened, but what would your proposal The solution would be to have us do it the way the code says it, planning and zoning. But and why can't we change the code? Or, okay, well then you can do that too. Well, that's I mean, what I'm asking. Right. What would your solution be? Which one is it? I would prefer to have planning and zoning approved. Okay, I'm asking why. Why? Yes. I mean, because that's what the purpose of planning and zoning is. And that's what, I, that's what I've been fighting with Council's about is that what planning? What is planning and zoning? This is a good. What do you think planning and zoning should be doing? Well, I'm asking is, do they have other things on their plate that it's not appropriate for them to take on other other responsibilities? Well, so that, that's a, that's a big consideration if you're adding on to somebody else's uh, and job. I think, you know, increasing their pay, increasing their budget, and just saying, oh, this is what this says. Here's some more work. There is no pay. There is no. No one gets paid on planning and zoning. Well, the only people that show up there, I mean, Eric gets paid because he goes there. Some people volunteer their time, and that's also something that you have to consider. Right, and, but there's... There's constraints to that. Okay, so I'm going to answer a couple... Of, it's it's going to be talked about in the planning and zoning meetings, because okay. I'm going to be going there, too. I'm going to actually talk about this for about 30 seconds. So, uh, my recollection of all of this is when Becky went full-time, um, this was discussed at length as to why Becky was actually going to be going, or uh, let me rephrase that, I don't want to use her name in this. Um, our administrative assistant ended up going full time and the, the majority of that reason is because they were all going to be processed in house. Um, my own personal experience with having a fence permit, when you have to wait three weeks for a fence permit and then another three weeks for the next meeting, 
you cannot tell 250 new residents that you guys are going to have to wait an average of six weeks to get a fence. The amount of fencing and decking permits that we got were astronomical over the last two years. So I am not going to disagree um, with it needs reworded maybe, um, but the process in my recollection and in 2018, you know, when all of this was changing, I actually remember all of this and I do remember them taking it away from planning and zoning um, and maybe what the best thing to do would be to go back and listen to some of the minutes and look at some of those types of things because I do believe we were recording them back then. Um, but our administrative assistant was going from part-time to full-time and that was one of the um, large things that she was going to be taking over uh, because doing them in-house um, instead of it going through planning and zoning was much more efficient um, and it just made sense for our residents to not have to wait and get it done. So that's my recollection from all of it. I, I would like to go back through and read some of the minutes and all of that to verify exactly um, what happened, but that was the reason that it was switched. And I don't know if Brian, you remember some of that, but that I was- I was there and I remember, but I think Jesse I, probably has a salient point. There Perfect. is, you will get no argument from me that there needs some work on the code here, Perfect. but 14601B says directly, uh, let's see, where did it go? that again? 14641.01B. Uh, permitting, inspecting, and acceptance. And this has to do with fences generally. This has nothing to do with the one we're talking about Thursday. That's why I don't feel bad to bring it up. No fence may be installed or constructed without first obtaining a permit from the code enforcement officer and the mayor or his or her designate. That does not require planning and zoning approval. And that I am certain that the re and that was passed in 2017, and the, the one that was referenced earlier is older. So we went from what the the most recently passed languages, and certainly the point of that is to speed up the process for residents. Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah. I, that I remember the top, top, that may have been the intent, but it wasn't accomplished through, because that code that I read, 144207B, is still in effect. It says planning and zoning approved. It says that you get the permit from the code enforcement officer. Right. It doesn't say that, that doesn't mean that it doesn't have to first be approved by planning and zoning. And see, this is this is a great example of how our law director has not, Jesse, I love the heck out of you, I really do. But what you have to do here is defend the mistakes, and one of these days you're gonna to start to stop defending the mistakes and correcting the mistakes while they're happening. And this is another example of that, is that here you are saying that it says that the code enforcement officer will give you the, issue the permit. That doesn't mean that planning and zoning, that 144207B doesn't apply any longer. And that you just get your permit from the code enforcement officer. Okay, okay. so, here, we, we are done. I am now moving to adjourn the meeting. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Because, you know, after, after, your, after your promise not to waste our time, you super effectively wasted a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> That's your opinion. <laughs> I, 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 I,